So, ALR. Are we rolling now? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, okay, so basically, the uh, they changed the rules uh, as of February tw uh, 2019 for uh, ALR properties. Um, so the, the two kind of uh, governing bodies or whatever, uh, we have the ALCA, which is the Agricultural Land Commission Act. So we'll be referring to the ALCA a lot throughout this. And the Agricultural Land Reserve, which of course is the ALR, <laughs> Use Regulation. <clears throat> so that's in relation to residences in the, in the Agricultural Land Reserve. And the ALCA and ALR use, use regulation will govern if inconsistent with this bulletin. So that's kind of a disclaimer. So if anything's in here could be incorrect, then the actual regulation supersedes us. That makes sense. So it's kind of uh, CYA there. Um, and more, and, and more uh, qualifications. This information bulletin is directed only to interpret to interpretation of the ALCA and ALR use regulation. All other applicable laws, regulations, and bylaws related to residential uses must also be complied with. So other, you know, obviously municipal bylaws. So the recent changes to the statute and regulation, effective yeah, February 22nd, 2019, the ALCA has been in, amended and the ALR use regulation has been created. Though many concepts contained in the ALCA and its regulations are unchanged from the past, there have been changes to the use of ALR land for residences. All references in this information bulletin uh, are as of February 22nd. So this is something, I don't know, how many people have sold properties in ALR here? One, two, three, four. Yeah, I, I actually don't believe I, I ever have, um, but it's, it, this is very good information. Obviously, you need to know this information if you're working with a buyer or, or a seller or not. So, so the following is a summary of the key changes. So generally, land in the ALR may have no more than one residence, uh, subject to certain grandfathering exceptions, and we're going to cover that later. In addition, the Commission may approve an application for an additional residence if necessary for farm use. But the commission is prohibited from approving an additional residence otherwise. Uh, so there's new size, sitting, and requirements that apply to the residential structure. So the total floor area of principal residence must be 500 square meters or less in order to comply mm -hmm. with the ALCA. Though a local government may impose a lower size cap under the bylaws. The Commission has resolved on the definition of total floor area. So 500 square meters. It's 5,000 square feet. Oh, thank you. Okay, good. Um, the a ALCA and regulations had previously contained provisions facilitating the construction of additional dwellings for farm health. So obviously, if you drive down, you know, 152nd Street south of Highway 10 or um, there's a 168th Street, I think, there's some on that land where, where those basically castles are built. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's for, those are the only way they can build those are for, for farm hats. Uh, the ALCA regulations had previously contained provisions to, uh, provisions facilitating the construction of additional dwellings for farm health, manufactured homes for immediate family members, and accommodation above an existing farm building, or in parts of the province, a second single-family dwelling. So I guess there's some areas where you can put two, two single-family dwellings. These provisions are no longer found in the regulation, though the ALCA provides some grandfathering. Again, we'll, come, we'll go into that. So there's some flexibility there if it's necessary for farm use. If a landowner w wishes, in the absence of certain grandfathering exceptions, to have a principal re residence having a total floor area that is more than 500 square meters to have an additional residence or to use a residential structure in a manner that contravenes the regulations. 
the landowner may submit an application, though the local government seeking the commission, commission approval calls this type of application an application for non-adhering residential use, so a non-compliance, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to cover more about that. So in other words, there's some flexibility there. So as far as the principal resident goes, <coughs> residents, <coughs> in order to comply with the ALCA, an approving body such as the local government may not approve or permit con construction or alteration of a principal residence on ALR land unless the residence has a total floor area of 500 square meters or less and is sized used in accordance with the ALR. So, in other words, the local government <coughs> has to follow these guidelines in order to allow a permit. For, <coughs> for an additional residence, an approving body may not uh, approve or permit construction <coughs> unless the residence is approved by the commission. So, again, the commission supersedes the municipal uh, uh, bylaws. Um, an application to the commission asking it to approve uh, non-adhering residential use, such as the construction of a principal residence, um, may be submitted through the landowner's local government. So that means, so for more information, so I guess if I want to apply, I go to my city hall, and the city hall will go to the, to the commission to ask for permit if we want a variance on what the laws are. That makes sense? Any portion of uh, local government bylaws that purports to allow use of land in the ALR that is not permitted uh, by the regulation or contemplates a use of land that would impair or impede the intent of the regulation is inconsistent, has no force or effect. So again, the commission has all the power. That makes sense? For example, if a zoning bylaw, so <coughs> municipal zoning bylaw, provides for more residents on ALR land than do the uh, commission and ALR regulation, it, its provision for extra residences is, is of no force. <coughs> yeah, I think we get that. <coughs> Construction, alteration, or use of any residences in contribution, uh, contravention may be subject to compliance and enforcement action, even if the construction Alteration of use seems to be inclined <laughs> compliance with the local government bylaws. Once again, I think we get that. So that's very clear. So they must have had issues in the past, the ALR, uh, with municipalities giving permits and landowners going ahead with the construction, say, well, I've got a permit, but if it contravenes the a ALCA or ALR regulation, then they can't do it. So if you have a client that wants to do that, just you have to. Make sure they're aware of this. Local government bylaws can be more restrictive of residential use of the ALR than the ALCA. The ALR use regulation identifies certain designated farm uses and permitted non-farm uses that local governments must not prohibit, but places no limitation on local government powers to prohibit or otherwise restrict land uses. So lo local governments may impose restrictions on sizing, silting, and use of principal res residences on ALR land additional to those found in the ALCA. For example, local government could enact a bylaw imposing a size limit smaller. So they can so they can govern under the limits but not over. Right? So if a municipal doesn't want a five thousand square foot home, they can say no, you're only allowed four thousand. Just going on recently, though. Maybe there was some news. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay. That, uh, there were houses, I think you cannot make it more than 5,000 square Okay. So the governments can, again, restrict under but not over oh, okay. over the lands. Yeah. Areas without zoning bylaws. Note that some of the areas of the province do not have zoning bylaws. The absence of local zoning bylaws does not relieve the land over from, mm -hmm. only from complying with the regulation. New construction of a residence, an ALR that has no existing residence. Okay, so this is vacant land. No application is required to the commission in order to construct a residence 
with a total floor area of 500 meters or less. Okay. So you don't have to go to the commission on vacant land as long as it's within their maximum size. The commission will consider the residence when built on vacant parcel to be the principal residence. If the proposed pr pr principal residence is more than 500 square meters, or there is already another residence located on the land, in order to construct the residence, the landowner may apply to the commission through the local government and obtain permission from the commission. So it sounds like all the applications have to go to the local government first, which makes sense, get a building permit, and then the local government goes to the commission to make sure it's all good. And so I'm sure there's extra fees there for the builder. Grandfathering. Completing residential construction initiated on or before February 22nd, 2019. If by February 22nd, 2019, a landowner has already initialed construction of a residence in the ALR, a certain circumstance, the owner, in certain circumstances, the owner may be able to complete that work without application to the commission. In other circumstances, the work will not be able to proceed unless the Commission first approves an application of non-adhering residential use made by the owner. Like that, non-adhering. They always used to say uh, non-conforming. Uh, non-conforming. Who said that? No, Duncan. Yeah, non-conforming. That's mm -hmm. the... So I guess non-adhering is the one, <laughs> yeah. Finish. So again, total floor area of 500 square meters or less. If the landowner is completing construction of an unfinished principal, okay, so this again, he started before the February date. If he's completing construction of an unfinished principal residence, which will on completion have a total floor area of 500 square meters or less, and it's otherwise also compliant, the owner may complete that construction, okay. Uh, so, but if it's more than 500 square meters, um, the landowner may continue if where building permit application is required by local government. All required authorizations to construct the residence were granted before, okay, before, so if, before February 22nd, and construction of the foundation of the residence substantially begins on or before November 15, 2019. From the date the construction of, of the residence began until completion, the construction or alteration is carried out in accordance with all applicable authorizations and enactments and continues without interruption other than work stoppages. Considered reasonable. So they're really getting down to nitty gritty of what if, what if, what if. So they're kind of covering all, all the anticipated issues and like that. <coughs> Or building permit authorization is not required by local government if the authorizations to construct the residence were required. Construction of the foundation had substantially began before the, de the February date, and from the date of construction of the residence began until completion. The construction or alteration is carried out in accordance with all applicable authorizations and enactments. It continues without interruption other than work and stop, stoppage is considered reasonable. So if they stop construction for three months for no good reason, then they, they're going to have to go back to the drawing board probably and reapply. Unfinished additional residents. So I think basically they're just repeating what we just said for the for the primary residence. That makes sense. So all the same what we just said. I'm not gonna. It's, it's just a ditto. Yeah. Uh, completing residential alterations initiated. Okay, again on or before February. If an owner wants to complete alter alterations. Okay, so this is alterations. Um, that has been initiated prior to the owner may do so without application. 
to alter means to alter the exterior of the structure as to increase its size. Okay, so if they've already started adding on, then it's all good to move or alter the exterior walls or edges to, ex uh, uh, to change its siding. Yeah. Completing alterations to a principal re residence. If the landowner is completing alterations to a principal residence, that will not cause its total floor area to exceed 500 square meters, and that will otherwise also be compliant the landowner may complete those alterations without applying. So again, they're just they're kind of going through all different scenarios here, basically the same same rule. So that again, alterations more than 500. If it's already started, same thing. Alteration that commits. completing alterations to additional residents. So this is kind of a repeat, guys. And I think, by the way, the link to this went out to everybody, right? So, alterations, that's all the same alterations. Okay, so they just talk more about alterations before and after February. It's all the same thing. Okay, so this is, this is different new stuff here. And I actually have had a lot of questions on this, on second residences on ALR and manufactured homes. So this would be good information. Manufactured home on ALR land. If on February 22, 2019, there was one manufactured home which was an additional residence and was constructed in accordance <clears throat> with all applicable enactments and was used as a residence by a member of the immediate family of the owner of the land, it may continue to be used as a residence. If on February 22, there was one manufactured home up to 9 meters in width, constructed in accordance with all the applications and use as a residence by a immediate family member. So it may continue to be used. If there's no other residence <clears throat> other than principal residence, then the size and sitting of the residence does not alter. So basically it just says if there was one there before this, it's okay to continue, to continue with that. And I have had a lot of questions on that. A lot of the times on, on these ALR big parcels, there's more than one one uh, manufactured home. The size of the manufactured home. So there is no right to replace a residential structure which is permitted due to a grandfathering exception. An application to the commission is for its approval is required to replace such a structure. There's no right to replace a residential structure. Yeah. So in other words, if there's a 6,000 square foot home right now, it's grandfathered, it's okay. But if they, they can't tear it down and build another 6,000 square foot, right? Or if it burns down or whatever. Come on in if you want. Okay, single level accommodation. Hi, come on in. I thought you locked me out. No, <clears throat> never, never. Are there any seats back there? Yeah, or, yeah, back right there's one up here, right in the front, your choice. Corner, corner's good. Single level accommodation constructed mm -hmm. above an existing building on a farm. Okay, this is interesting. If on February 22 there was accommodation that had been constructed in accordance with all applicable enactments above an existing building on the farm, and that had only a single level and may be continued to be used if there is no other residence on the land other than the principal residence and the size and siting of the residence is not altered after February 22nd unless it's already been permitted or an application is received or the total area is not increased by the alteration. There is no right to replace a residential structure which is permitted due to a grandfathering exception. Said that an application to the commission for its approval is required to replace such a structure. Any questions on any of that so far? Uh, second, so a second single family dwelling. Uh, so prior to February 22, land in the ALR was considered to be either Zone 1 or Zone 2. So Zone 1 was the south coast. 
Island and Okanagan. Zone 2 is the interior of Northern Kootenai. Prior to February 22nd, certain activities were permitted in Zone 2 that were not permitted in Zone 1. The term Zone 2, second uh, single-family dwelling, is used in this bulletin to refer to a second single-family dwelling in the area of the province that until February 22 was Zone 2. Okay, So if the parcel was at least 50 uh, hectares in size, and if the total area occupied by all residences and other residential structure, roads and service lines, and all land between them was 4,000 meters or less. So we're not going to come across Zone 2 much in our but If on February 22 there was a Zone 2 second single-family dwelling um, that was in accordance with all the applicable enactments, the Zone 2 may continue to be used as a residence if there is no other residence on the land, it's a principal residence. The size and sitting of the zone is, was not altered after February 22, unless, it, unless permitted or the total area occupied uh, is not increased by alteration. There's no right to, again, same thing, there's no right to replace a residential structure, which is permitted due to a grandfathering exception. An application to the, to the commission is required. So again, you can't tear it down and rebuild, or if it burns down, you can't re replace it. Uh, replacing a residence. The term construct, yeah, we know what construction is. Um, if an owner is replacing the only residence on a parcel in the ALR, the total floor area of a new residence must not be. This is very repetitive. Um, more than 500 square meters. Parcels where there's more than one residence. An application to the commission and commission approval of that application are required to replace residences which predate the ALR. Uh, in other words, older than December 1972, <coughs> residents approved by local government under the former Section 18. Uh, residents permitted without application to the commission and residents constructed in contravention of local zoning bylaws. So if there's some non-conforming residents on there that have been there since before 1972. Whether an application is required to replace a residence that the commission itself had previously approved on application may depend on the terms of that approval. Use of residence in the ALR. Use of residence located in the ALR is limited. Generally, it may only be used as a residence subject to limited exception. Secondary suites, the use of land in the ALR for a secondary suite is permitted if there's one suite only, located in the principal residence. Limited accommodation for tourists, uh, that's, we're not going into that right now. Soil or fill. For residential construction. Removing soil from or replacing fill on the ALR land is permitted for the construction or maintenance of principal residence if the total area from which soil is removed or on which fill is placed is a thousand square meters or less. If the affected area is a floodplain, an additional condition applies. The resulting elevation level must be consistent with applicable local government or First Nation government requirements for flood protection. Removing soil from or placing fill on ALR land in connection with other residential uses, such as the construction of additional residence, alteration of a residence, where the area affected is uh, greater than 1,000 square meters is not permitted. So that would basically be kind of the footprint of the construction of a, of a new house or the uh, foundation. An owner of ALR land seeking to remove soil or place fill may submit a notice of intent along with payment of the required fee to the, ALR, to the ALC's chief executive officer. The landowner may also apply to the commission. <clears throat> so they have to apply to bring in or take out soil for kind of obvious reasons. Following types of fill are prohibited. Uh, construction or demolition waste. Masonry, rubble, concrete, cement. 
rebar and drywall and wood base, asphalt glass. That surprises me, eh? So you have to build it out of leaves, basically. Those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, oh yeah, of course, that makes sense now. The, mm -hmm. that, all that's prohibited. I was reading that that's loud. I'm going, what? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah, so it has to be good, uh, yeah, yeah, kind of organic stuff or just good old plain dirt and mm -hmm. sand and rocks. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Infrastructure necessary for residential use. Subject to any limits and conditions set out in Part 4, the use of agri uh, agricultural land to construct, maintain, or operate the following is permitted. A structure other than a residential structure that is necessary for residential use, for example, a garage. A driveway or utility necessary for rent, residential use. Applications for non-adhering residential. An owner may apply to the commission <coughs> for commission for a non-adhering residential use. Non-adhering residential use means any, uh, any of the following. Additional residents, principal residents having floor area that exceeds 500 square meters. Use of a residential structure that contravenes the regulation. So you have to go onto the website for more details on that. Section 25 one of the ALCA provides that on receiving a use application, the Commission normally may refuse permission for the use, apply for grant permission, with or without limits or conditions, or grant permission for an alternative use or subdivision, with or without limitations, that they can accept, reject, or change it. With respect to an application for a non-adhering residential use, the Commission must consider the prescribed criteria, if any, uh, must not grant permission for an additional residence unless the additional residence is necessary for a farm use, and must reject the application if required by the regulations to do so. So that's just clarification stuff and gives them something to fall back on when they're making their decisions. So they, you know, based on Section 25.1, we reject or accept or change. So that's basically it. So that, uh, like I said, took about 30 minutes. So not everyday use stuff, but good stuff, um, you know, when you're out talking to the farmers. And, and this is just glossary stuff. We don't need to cover that. So any questions on it for you guys? No. So we get out there and sell that ALR land.